All right, hello, hello. My name is Max Wolf. We're looking at discussion 10, spring 2015 in CS61A. This is going to be a quick video on streams. Um, so streams are, are a pretty cool data structure. Essentially what a stream is, is it's a link. So something that you're already used to, a linked list, which just a typical linked list. List has a first and a rest. And this first typically contains some number. And the rest typically points to another linked list, which will have a number and then either nil in this case, or another pointer to a, a linked list. Stream is a little bit different in that we are not going to explicitly define our rest until we actually call it. So we're able to lazily evaluate and lazily create a um, sort of a potentially infinitely long link. And this is, uh, this is pretty cool because it means that we don't have to take up any memory until we actually need to build this second link. And we don't need to waste any computation time building a whole chain of links until we actually need it. So it's a really powerful concept. And the way we're going to construct a stream is by having a first that's defined to be some number or some item. And then we're actually going to define some function that takes no arguments that's going to be assigned to um, as a property method. And we'll look at the source code in a moment to rest. such such that when I construct a stream and try to access the rest of the stream, I'm actually going to call this lambda function to generate our next stream in the sequence. So let's look at the, the stream implementation. I think it might be helpful for us to actually walk through how a stream is implemented, because we get the implementation here in our, uh, in our streams, stream section of the discussion. So let's look and see what we're actually defining. So defining a class stream, it just inherits from object. We first define an empty class. And we're going to say empty, the class empty is just a empty object that we're going to say is going to uh, represent the end of a stream, right? So some empty stream. OK. And now we have an init because it's a, just a normal class. And it's got a first and some compute rest, which is initially set to be lambda stream empty. So if I don't specify compute rest, then I'm just going to pass in a, uh, I'm going to say it's the end of a stream. So let's look at how we'd actually call a stream. So if I say s1 is equal to um, stream, and we'll say 1, and we'll just make a stream that returns an infinite sequence of 1s. And so let's see what's actually happening. When I make this call, I'm going to call init. It's going to set 1 to be my first element of my stream. And then my compute rest is equal to lambda s1, which is this object right here. And we're going to say assert callable compute rest. So we've passed in a lambda function. That's fine. And self.first is equal to 1. We've done that here. Self.underscore compute rest is equal to compute rest. This underscore convention is a Python way to represent a private variable. So some computer languages like Java have a way to explicitly call something private. Python doesn't have that built in, so we uh, we have a convention to use an underscore to say you should not be accessing this method from from outside of the class. OK. And it looks like, well, we don't have a rest here. That's sort of strange. And because uh, we know we can access streams normally by doing s1.rest to compute the next thing. Oh, but we do right here. We've got a property method rest, which is actually going to check to see whether or not compute rest is not none. And if it is, then it's going to, if it's not none, then it is going to call self.compute-rest, uh, which we specified up here. And it's going to set self.rest to be self.compute-rest. And then uh, self.compute-rest is equal to none. So this is sort of our own way of memoizing something. So this object is going to only call self.compute-rest once, because we will have stored the result of compute-rest inside of self.rest. And we don't have to keep calling this potentially expensive function. OK, so what's happening here? When I call s1.rest, I'm actually going to call my lambda function right up here. And I'm going to return s1. And so if I call s1.rest, I'm setting my rest pointer now to be equal to s1. And so we can have more complicated, complicated functions right here. And you'll see one in a second that's a little bit more complicated. But 
the general formula for creating a stream is to have some first, that's a number or some object, and then a no argument function that follows it. Okay, so let's take a look at a really easy example. It's called easy stream. Streams are hard, so if you have questions, don't let the easy stream name dissuade you from asking them. Uh, we're going to define some function easy stream, which is going to return a stream of numbers starting at 1 and going on forever into the future. And um, here's how we'll do it. Okay, so we're going to return a stream. So we're saying that easy stream is going to return a stream. So it's going to return a stream. And this stream is going to have a first that's initially defined to be 1. So if I call easy stream with no arguments, I'm going to start it off at 1. And then I'm going to define my compute rest function. So we just saw the source code for stream, and we saw that whatever function we pass in as our second argument is actually going to be the function that gets mapped to rest. Can't take any arguments. So we're going to say it's a lambda function that actually calls easy stream again, but with a new first. So now my first, if my first was initially 1, I'm going to make a stream that starts at 2. And so uh, this is actually a really common pattern that you're going to see when we, when we do streams. We're actually going to call some helper function or some function that's going to return a stream, and we're going to call it with some arguments that we're able to define just from our state. So this lambda function technically takes no arguments, but it's really calling easy stream with a different set of arguments. Okay, so let's see what happens when I actually create an instance of easy stream. I'm going to say stream1 is equal to easy stream. Call it with no arguments. So if I write stream one dot first, I'm going to get a one out. And if I write stream one dot rest dot first, what's going to happen? Well, stream one dot rest is going to get evaluated, and that's going to call the compute rest function, which is really this lambda function right here. And this is going to call easy stream, which returns a stream that has two. And, um, and some function passed in that's going to be easy stream 3 right here. Okay, so what does this actually look like? So we start our easy stream with a 1 and the future, which is really just this lambda function that we've defined up here. And when I call s1.rest.first, my s1 now looks like this. 1 points to 2 points to the future. Okay, and um, yeah, and so this is going to return a 2. And this is going to keep happening, and every time I call rest again, s1.rest.rest.rest.rest or whatever, it's going to evaluate uh, compute rest continuously. It's actually going to cache it as well, so if I call s1.rest again, it's not going to make another call to this lambda function. It's going to use the cached version that we saw from the source code. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or on Piazza and we'll try and get them answered. Great, thanks for watching.